It's about now humanizing um, the context of this energy transition, which is the biggest component of climate change. Uh, climate change is very real. It's happening all around us already. Uh, so we, it's not something that's coming in the future. Um, but maybe then, you know, to bringing this back, and, and I support everything that's been said around ESG reporting and the need for this, um, and the importance and how it's coming closer and more real into organizations and business. Um, but I think at the end of the day, this is actually not about climate change. This is really about rapidly changing global policy, geopolitics, risk, um, investment, supply chains, trade disruption. So. Um, from a business perspective, I don't think this is a, uh, it's, and, and you know, it's not to say we, they shouldn't be thinking about purpose and impact investing, but I think this is about rules of survival. Firstly, very importantly, um, this is about a technology disruption, um, and it's around disrupting the biggest global economic sector. Um, but clean tech now dominates global investment. Um, and it has now passed fossil fuel as of about 2022. So well over one and, one and a half trillion dollars a year dominates clean tech. So I think, you know, in the South African context, we've really got to think about, you know, how are we going to be competitive in this space? How are we going to be resilient as an economy? And I'll come back to um, the point about humanizing this, and um, this is our home. So we have to recognize the impact of climate change. But Ultimately, a just energy transition is going to be around industrialization because that's how we're going to create more jobs, more skills, more manufacturing, and this is where the investment is moving. So I think in that context, businesses have to think really quickly, be very nimble, and have really good strategies. The exogenous and endogenous pressures on mining to be ahead of the pack when it comes to uh, carbon neutrality to come to ESG is, is, is enormous, and it, as I say, it's internal as well as external. It's quite interesting looking at the barometer at, um, at what the influences were on or motivations were for, for ESG, and uh, right at the top of the, of the, uh, the scale was, was, was investment. And for a long time, mining has been pressured by investors and pressured by external stakeholders but also internally, uh, we're driven by social license. We can't operate with a social license. Uh, if one looks at most of the larger mining companies have committed to carbon neutrality by 2040, which is a, ta a very, very tough uh, task, but we're 10 years ahead of, of, uh, of, of, of the Paris Agreement. And that is not only because we want to comply with the Paris Agreement and we want to contribute to our national determined contribution to the Paris Agreement, but there's also economic necessity um, in this country because of the high cost of power. When it comes to the question of just transition, as much as the mining industry drove our economy and our political economy, and with it the social economy, we're now having to, to, to grapple with the consequence of mine closures. And uh, mine closures might have been applauded by many of the environmental lobbies, but actually, um, I've said on many public platforms, and I'll say this again here today, that mine closure creates more in environmental damage than the opening up of the mine, purely because of the, in, the endemic poverty or social distress and economic distress that it causes. And so there's no greater, uh, there's no greater destroyer of economy or environment than, than poverty. So the mining industry is very, very committed to ESG and, uh, and, and again, I think that underestimated in what we are doing. This is a major aspect of the just transition aspect of the just energy transition. The communities aren't brought along, and there's a tremendous opportunity for communities to be brought along. Yeah. The implementation of just energy projects on mines does not necessarily benefit mining communities. And the other aspect of it is that when the mines finally close, and they are, we've contracted immensely in 1990, we were 50% of the global, uh, the global production, we're now 3%, we're statistically insignificant. But the impact of mining on society and on economy in this country is nevertheless huge. And so what we may do as we contract and we have less institutional capacity and balance sheet to deal with the immense social problems that arise from mine closure, yeah is something that, can, that the renewable energy can contrib contribute to if we are creative about it. Mines die, the renewable energy uh, utilities will still be there. So how do we actually 
How do we bring that into the community environment, the mining impacts of community? We're a country that writes very, very good policy. We're appalling at implementing policy. So, yes, we have the right policies. It's the responsibility of those operating within that policy to actually uh, to, to implement the intentions and objectives of that policy.